Now, there's a trend that's been going on in the United States for a few decades now. That is that younger generations are not too inclined to do STEM careers. In this case, Gen Z is not really pursuing or wanting to do STEM jobs. But how did we get here? How did the country, the United States, that invented Silicon Valley in the modern tech revolution that sparked social media and internet to grow globally, how did they find themselves with a STEM shortage? That's something I want to talk about in this video. The need for workers in the chip sector, from technicians to engineers and more, is being felt across the industry, with a recent study from the Semiconductor Industry Association projecting a current shortage of 67,000 workers in the sector and a broader gap of 1.4 million in the U.S. economy by 2030. Now, one of the common themes on this channel is that we've talked about, we've discussed just how the U.S. education system has taken a huge step backward over the past few decades here. And it's no surprise that there would be a shortage of STEM workers. And it's something that I wanna to talk to you guys today about. How the education system in the United States basically left millions of students behind by not providing them the adequate resources to pursue these highly skilled, high paying STEM jobs. Now, when we think of a STEM job, we can think of anything like a doctor, a highly specialized robotics technician, a data scientist, an engineer. All those fields are very high paying jobs. But unfortunately, over the past few decades here, a lot of our schools in our country have been underfunded and they haven't really been uh, given the adequate resources to basically prepare our future students. And unfortunately, in this case, Gen Z with the adequate uh, guidance and tools necessary to pursue those high, highly skilled jobs. Now in 2023, the National Science Foundation did a report on K through 12 schools in the country and they found out that on, only 32% of those schools offered anything of coding or computer science related fields. Uh, that's a huge miss opportunity because as we know, those are some of the highest growing and the most in demand jobs in the country and in the world right now. Now, another really unfortunate situation here is that a lot of poor schools or rural schools in the United States aren't getting the proper tools and guidance for STEM. That means those students are missing out on all those opportunities. It kind of all goes back to education here. If a country fails to produce a well-educated, versatile society, they will miss out on so many opportunities for future generations to come. For example, in 2024, it was noted in a study that the U.S. actually faces a shortage of 100,000 math and science teachers. So as a consequence, we don't have as many STEM resources, we don't have as many STEM teachers they're able to teach our next generation, to be able to teach Gen Z or Gen Alpha in this case. Now, I was very fortunate. I went to a pretty wealthy high school and that wealthy high school did have a lot of STEM uh, field. We had like a 3D printer, we had an entire STEM library, an entire STEM uh, classroom, if you will. So we had a lot of resources. But most people, most students in the country aren't that fortunate. That brings us to this point. A lot of schools in the country have very outdated computers and equipment. They really don't have a space to inspire students to want to do this very difficult field of STEM. Now, here's a very common trend that we've seen in schools across the country is that a lot of these students aren't really well disciplined. They don't really behave and they don't freaking bother to be in that classroom. Why would they spend all that time and effort to learn a very complex and highly skilled uh, role that is in STEM? And shoot, a lot of these students are going on rampages and breaking a lot of these laptops and equipment just like it was worth nothing. Okay, these broken Chromebooks have got to stop. My name is Mr. Parrish, and this is today's haul, working as an IT guy in a middle school. As you can see, the hinges popped out right here because the students, they kept me busy with the following. Crack screen, crack screen, crack screen, crack screen, crack screen, and last but not least, another crack screen. Um, we do hold them accountable here, so all, I believe it was six of these students uh, will be billed for cracking their screen. Um, 
I believe all of them had a case too, so I don't know how they cracked their screen. Um, it takes quite a bit of work to crack these screens, so I don't know what they're doing. And there you go. A lot of public officials have raised a lot of concerns, and rightfully so, like we've seen in those videos, they've raised concerns of purchasing and using tax dollars to buy all this very expensive equipment. A kid came up to me today and he was saying, you know how you said that there was graphics cards in the 3D modeling PCs? I was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, there's a room full of them in my school. I'm about to go steal one like you taught me how to do. I did not teach you that. I told you those PCs have graphics cards because it takes a graphics card to 3D model, not so you can take them. I told you guys the story of the guy who stole the graphics cards from my old school. Yeah, he got arrested in three weeks. Why would you want to buy a 3D printer only for that graphics card in that 3D printer to be stolen when we know that graphics card is worth hundreds of dollars? Yeah, it's stupid. It's ridiculous. We're the most powerful country in the world, yet we have students going on rampages and trashing all their classrooms and taking all this expensive equipment for granted. When we, the citizens, the taxpayers, are spending all that money on bonds and millions of dollars in school subsidies only for it to not be treated well. We've also seen a lot of schools in Chicago raise similar concerns and as a result they haven't really wanted to purchase any of this very cool, sophisticated and, and uh, specialized equipment because they're afraid the students are not really going to treat it well and they're going to break it within a year. And there's also the, a huge stigma around STEM. Everyone has an opinion on STEM. It's this huge stigma that it's only for nerds, that it's very difficult to do. And as a result, many students are deterred from wanting to do it. They don't want to pursue it because they don't want to be classified as a nerd or a weirdo or, or an incel or any other freaking term there is. I remember when I was in high school, there was a stigma with STEM. Uh, you know, a lot of people classified those students as nerds. They were very antisocial and they were in their own little world. Now, that kind of has a pretty uh, damaging effect in the long run because at the end of the day, those, those same kids that did STEM, well, if I go to their Instagram right now or their Facebook, they're doing pretty well for themselves. They got themselves a nice place. They got themselves a good job. A lot of times they're in relationships and they don't look antisocial. So uh, the huge stigma on STEM is pretty damaging. And, you know, this is reinforced with a lot of pop culture stereotypes. I mean, think of like the show Big Bang Theory, right? You have these group of nerds who are all STEM related. Um, you know, us as viewers, you know, people as viewers are like, oh, I don't want to be that. You know, I don't want to be a nerd at the end of the day. On top of that, STEM has this stigma that it's so difficult to do, that it's pretty unattainable because you have to have excellent and very good grades to do it. It's going to take a lot of work. And part of that is true, but just like with any good thing, you're going to have to put in some work. And, and it's even deterred some students from pursuing STEM. Something I feel very strongly about that I don't think is talked about enough is the weeding out the weak mentality of STEM education and how harmful it is. And I probably feel this way because I personally was weeded out of a STEM major. So what I'm talking about when I say this is like, we all know the line, like, look to your left, look to your right. One of you won't be here next semester. That's a weed out class. Weed out classes were established in the 19th century because there's a very limited amount of STEM careers available, but that is not the case anymore. So this is very outdated and needs to stop. <laughs> so one time after I personally had a very upsetting and discouraging interaction with a professor, my mom and I were talking about this and she sent me this article. It was published in the New York Times in November. And if you read this, the article talks about a study that proves that while these weed out classes are supposed to weed out the kids that aren't intelligent enough for a STEM career, it literally has nothing to do with that and it has to do with how many friends you have in a class because this influences the support you have and your frame of mind. These classes also very unfairly impact minority groups in STEM. And there was other high school surveys done. It found out that only 12% of students thought that STEM was cool. This had anything to do like with robotics or other technology fields. And there you go. There lies a huge problem with this entire situation. Gen Z and the younger generation don't view STEM as a cool thing. They don't view it as something that they want to do. They don't view it as fun. And quite frankly, they view it as an afterthought. To not rely on foreign born STEM workers and having to bring them from overseas 
Well, we're gonna have to change the stigma around STEM. Now, my foreign viewers, I wanna know what you guys think about this entire STEM situation. Is STEM viewed with such a negative connotation in your country? Let me know in the comment section below. There's also another instance here where a lot of women aren't really interested in doing STEM simply because there really isn't too many women in STEM in general in the country. There is a lack of mentorship and a lack of role models for them. So a lot of times they're not really seeking out this STEM field. As a woman in STEM, I get talked over or interrupted frequently during meetings and it is a point where it's my biggest pet peeve to talk over somebody. Like It drives me insane. But I am at the point if somebody's trying to talk over me, I just won't stop talking. Genuinely, let me finish my thought. If you think I'm wrong, that's okay. You can patiently wait. And a lot of these people, they're not actively listening is the issue, is they're just waiting for their turn to speak. And when they don't get it, they just go for it. And another major point here, there's a huge cost barrier for STEM in the United States. Remember how I said I went to a nicer high school that offered uh, STEM resources, well, that was a pretty wealthy high school. Unfortunately, a lot of these underfunded high schools in the country won't have those STEM resources. That basically creates a huge disparity among those that are qualified and those that are seeking STEM jobs. So you basically get a lot of higher income students from higher income families. They are the ones that are actually getting the STEM roles, while those that actually could use STEM jobs to you know, better the lives of them and their families, they're not really given the same opportunity. There's a huge cost barrier. According to the college board, uh, it costs around 20% more in tuition costs to attend uh, a STEM university or to pursue a STEM related degree. A 2024 survey actually found out that 58% of Gen Z has huge financial concerns in going to college. And like we've talked about in previous videos, it, on this channel, a lot of Gen Z students don't wanna to go to college simply because it costs too much money. They're not willing to put in the investment out front to pursue a job in STEM, even if it's gonna pay them around 70 to 80,000 post-graduation. I think Elon Musk re-sparked a very important question that we have in this country. Why don't we have more highly skilled individuals in STEM-related careers? Now, this is a huge debate that has erupted over the past few days here at the end of 2024. The United States isn't producing enough STEM workers. In short, around 24% of all STEM workers in the United States are actually foreign-born. That sparked this huge debate on Twitter with Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy. Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy posting and claiming that work visas for foreign nationals were essential because American culture doesn't prioritize exceptionalism. Well, Trump supporters say that's not what they voted for. Investigative reporter Olivia Rubin tracking the tweets and the tirade. Kira, a bit of an online battle over these positions. Musk and Ramaswamy have thrown support behind this visa program, which is, of course, popular in Silicon Valley and the tech industry for those highly skilled workers to come here uh, and work. But, of course, uh, there are those who are fiercely in Donald Trump's corner, saying that it is entirely sort of antithetical to Donald Trump's immigration policies, which uh, but other Republicans are, of course, slamming them. Nikki Haley, for example, uh, saying in a post to Central that American workers should be good enough and we shouldn't have to bring people in from abroad. To conclude, Elon Musk's main point there is that he would love to hire more U.S.-born American workers. But unfortunately, in his eyes and in his opinion, there isn't enough U.S. STEM workers in the country to satisfy the demand. Like we've said, 24% of all STEM workers are foreign-born. You would have to replace them with very skilled, highly specialized labor, which, like Elon Musk is saying, doesn't exist. Why are we having to rely on other countries for help when we have plenty of top tier universities and a lot of resources in this country to do so as well? Now, it shouldn't surprise anyone from all the different things that we've talked about on this video, but the United States only produces four STEM graduates for every thousand. Now, that's way lower than other countries like China, which produce nine instead of four. India produces eight out of a thousand. It's time to erase this stigma on STEM. It's hurting our country. 
and unfortunately, it's gonna hurt everyone in the long run. Only 18% of bachelor degrees awarded to Gen Z were in STEM fields, where 35% awarded were in liberal arts majors. Now, I'm all for the arts. I love the arts, and I think it's a very important thing for society. But we have a huge discrepancy here, you know, supply and demand. We don't need that many liberal arts majors. And although it's very, very important for society and the creativity is essential to foster, well, a very healthy and prosperous world, we don't need that many people that study something that really doesn't have enough jobs for them. You go to college, you get training and education for a career that will better your life and put you forward in what we call the American dream. And unfortunately, I think too many Gen Z students aren't really uh, thinking about STEM because they're so hyper fixated on what their friends are doing and what is fun in the short term. And now, believe me, going to a more creative minded degree is going to be so much more fun and you're going to have a way nicer college life and way less stress. But at the end of the day, it's not really going to put you ahead. And I think that's something that we should really teach Gen Z in our education system. We really need to tell them that in, in high school without boring them. I mean, there's a lot of really cool things that STEM is uh, capable of doing. STEM is the reason why we all have smartphones. It's the reason why I'm able to make this video right now and share it to you on YouTube. It takes millions, thousands of people to make that happen. And it took a lot of brilliant minds to do that. Now, time will tell what younger generations in our society will view STEM as. Will they view it as an entire field that is boring, uh, not really worth anything, and something that they don't want to deal with? Or will they view it as something pivotal, essential, and necessary for future growth in our entire society going forward? Well guys, I wanna hear what you guys think. What do you think of this STEM shortage and this entire stigma that Gen Z and younger generations have on STEM? Is this something that we should be worried about? Let me know in the comment section below. Be sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. It helps us out, helps support the channel, and most importantly, it helps shine a spotlight on issues like this. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another video. And like always, stay informed out there.